Okay, now on to today's program. Andy Greenberg is a national radio personality. He's hosted his own TV show and has been a Jewish educator for over 25 years. He is best known for his interactive and entertaining approach to teaching seminars. He's been on our staff for six months and has already become one of the more popular teachers in our program. He's a sought after speaker and trainer who has reached millions as an established and national and local radio personality. He's a former weekly TV talk show host and author whose book appeared as a full report in an award-winning movie. He'll tell you more about that. His motivational messages were heard daily for five years on hundreds of radio stations and listened to by millions, which makes him one of the most listened to speakers in America. Without further ado, to introduce our talk show today, your Jewish side, welcome Andy Greenberg. And you're an audience, so let's hear it for I met this lady when I was 15 years old. It happened to be that I met her the day of my 15th birthday. And I always look at her as a present from upstairs with a no return policy and a lifetime warranty. And she always applauses for me. So we're gonna do this like it's a real TV show, like it's a real talk show because we're gonna have opportunities to meet some magnificent guests, which is why you're here to listen to them, to learn them, to understand from them, and give them a marvelous round of applause when this wonderful lady goes around and says applause. And by the way, we're also gonna be transmitted directly to Omaha, Nebraska, where one of our guests are going to be telling us something that's gonna be coming up about a musical play. But first, let me tell you something. I'm originally from Omaha, Nebraska. How many people here have lived in Omaha, Nebraska? Raise your hand. <laughs> All right, well, I want to tell you, they can probably vouch for me that when I left Omaha approximately five months ago, I was not the last Jew <laughs> in Omaha, Nebraska. As a matter of fact, I left behind 6,000 Jewish people. But here's the thing that confused me. When Carol and I first went to Omaha, Nebraska, I wanted to find a Jewish community. So I made some phone calls and I said, how many Jewish people live in Omaha? And the answer was very simple, 6,000. Now, 25 years later, when I left, I said, how many people are we leaving here in Omaha, Nebraska? You heard the answer, the answer was 6,000. But I gotta tell you, the transition here to this part of Florida was magnificent, but I've gotta tell you the story first. This goes back when I lived in Manchester, New Hampshire. Yeah. Anybody from Manchester, New Hampshire? <laughs> All right, somebody likes Manchester, thank you, sir. Anybody from New Hampshire? We'll continue on. Okay. <laughs> All right, we've got one person there. So I had a job in Manchester, New Hampshire, and I was involved in Jewish education. So this non-Jewish person comes over to me one day, very innocently, and says the following. Andy, can I ask you a question about the Jewish religion? And I said, you know what? I'm gonna do my best to answer it. I said, what's your question? She says, I've studied the Jewish religion very carefully. Nowhere can I find the answer to my question. And I said, what is the question? She said, is it a law that you must send your children to Jewish camp? <laughs> and I said, well, where did you ever come up with that question? She says, every Jewish person I know goes ahead and sends their kids to Jewish camp. I said, well, it's not a law, it's a tradition. And that's what we all do. But then I went ahead and I studied and I said to myself, well, there are only, believe it or not, 90,000 children that go to Jewish camp during the year for 197 summer camps. And then I said, there's a question she forgot to ask me. And actually, I need the answer from you because I can't find the answer anywhere either, not in any one of our texts. Is it a Jewish law that if you're from New York, New Jersey, or Boston, or from the Northeast, when you retire. <laughs> I haven't even finished. <laughs> that you must retire in 
in southern Florida, where is it written? And by the way, do you know how many Jewish people there are in southern Florida at this very time? No, not 6,000. There are 6,000 in one complex. There are 515,000 Jewish people that somehow made a halakha, made a Jewish law. God says, hey, when it's time to retire, I know where I'm going to go. So here we are in this beautiful area, and of course I'm trying to compare where you shop. Now in Omaha we have a lot of people, and we have supermarkets, but on every corner do we have a Publix? <laughs> no, we don't. Here you have a Publix on every corner. On every corner you have a bank, but here's what confuses me even more. Next time you go to a shopping mall and you see the Publix there, please, you might already know this, how many nail places <laughs> are there? I mean, what is it with us? Do we have too much time on our hands that the only thing that we have to do is go to the nail parlor here and get our nails done? I've never seen anything. She's blue made. Okay, now I have to ask. In the past week, by a show of your hands, how many of us have gone to the nail parlor to have our nails done? <laughs> and how many have an appointment this week? <laughs> So where is it written that you have to do that? <laughs> now the other thing that confused me, this part of the country is known as the land of the birds. The snowbirds. And what's the other one? The early birds, the early bird dinner. So when I told people in Omaha that I'm gonna be coming right here to Southern Florida, the first thing they said to me, so Andy, what time are you gonna eat? Four o'clock to say that? <laughs> So I actually looked at the restaurants. Can somebody please tell me where there's an early bird special? I can't find one. <laughs> what happened to the early bird specials? When I used to come to visit my father, he always took me out. He says, Andy, we have to stop what we're doing. The afternoon is coming. No, we're not going to Midfoot, don't worry. We have to go to the early bird dinner, and that's exactly where we went. No more early bird dinners. I don't know what happened. They're here, fine, after the show, please see me, I need to know. <laughs> now, the other thing, there's another Jewish tradition that we all follow here that I think is amazing, and only a few people follow it in Omaha, Nebraska, and that is the very popular game of? Mahjong. Have you heard my pitch before? Mahjong. <laughs> and I did some research, and here's something you probably don't know, believe it or not, there's a little midrash, which is really hard to find, that, the game of Mahjong actually started. You won't believe this. No, it wasn't China. It wasn't Confucius. Look it up on the internet, because whatever is on the internet is true. <laughs> Mahjong started in Noah's Ark. Now I understand why there's so much rain here. When it rains, people go out and we play Mahjong. It is just something that is totally unbelievable. But do I love living here as a Jewish person in this part of the country? You bet. There is no other place where I can see such friendly people. And the thing that really inspires me is how safe everybody drives. <laughs> no, I'm being very serious with you because we had in Nebraska, we had something called tailgating when you went to the football game. That was a lot of fun. What do we do here? We tailgate on the roads. <laughs> Whatever happened to spacing, but the driving is so safe, nobody beeps their horn, everybody has their patience, I just think that's a wonderful way to live. Am I right or wrong? <laughs> yeah, so I don't know where it's written that we have to drive like crazy people, but when you leave here, please be respectful to the other person who's driving an automobile. There's a life in the family in front of you, there's a life in the family behind you, and we'd all love to come to the next session of the educational process. But coming here to South Florida is absolutely the best thing that we have ever done. In my community, I was looking for Jews. I realized then when I got there, when I looked at all the names, 85% of my community is Jewish, and there's over 1,000 homes. And that's why we call it your Jewish cottage. Because how many of us really enjoyed celebrating the new year? Please raise your hands. How many of us really celebrated the new year? So here's my question. Today is January 6th. Let's continue to celebrate. It's still the new year. And I've often wondered when something be no longer is brand new, 
when something becomes new or when something becomes used. Every day, every day, we need to take a look at the Chai. We need to take a look at life. And we need to say to ourselves, what are we going to do today to live a very, very enjoyable Chai life? And the answer is very simple. Do something that's fun. Do something that's fulfilling. Do something that brings laughter to other people. Because I'm going to conclude with one thing. There is something that each and every one of us in this room has done a lot of when we were younger. As we get older, 